I am grateful to Jason Allen for your good teaching last Sunday. If you didn't have the opportunity to be with us in person, you can go to our YouTube channel or to our webpage, orchardnh.org. There you can hear Jason's teaching. He walked us through Romans chapter 13, and here's what I learned, not only from your teaching, but also in my own study, that we are to be a people who wise up, to wise up in regards to the world around us, and that we are disciple makers of Jesus, not king makers, that we are to pay up our taxes and our love, to be indebted to others by loving them. We are to wake up because our salvation is nearer today than when we first believed. We are to dress up. We are to clothe ourselves with Christ, to put on the armor of light, and we are to buckle up and to zip up and to have nothing to do with an indecent or wrong way of life. The words of Romans chapter 13 are largely about living in a culture that is contrary to the kingdom of Jesus. But Romans chapter 14, where we are today in our journey through Romans, a roadmap for community, is how to live well together in the kingdom of Jesus. We learn to be for each other because we are in a community. But we are a community, hear this, living together in tension. So would you stand with me, please, as we listen to God's Word, Romans chapter 14, the first 12 verses. Listen, this is the Word of the Lord for us this day. Welcome anyone who is weak in faith, but don't argue about disputed matters. One person believes he may eat anything, while one who is weak eats only vegetables. One who eats must not look down on one who does not eat, and one who does not eat must not judge the one who does, because God has accepted him. Who are you to judge another's household servant? Before his own Lord, he stands or falls, and he will stand because the Lord is able to make him stand. One person judges one day to be more important than another day. Someone else judges every day to be the same. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. Whoever observes the day, observes it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. Whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat it. And he gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for himself, and no one dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and returned to life for this, that he might be the Lord over both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me. And every tongue would give praise to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself or herself to God. Pray with me, please. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Tension tension. Most often, it's a word that we associate with a negative experience. I have a tension headache. However, tension can be a positive force. In physics, tension is a pulling or stretching force transmitted along a rope, a cable, a rod, a truss. The Zakim Bridge, or Bunker Hill Bridge, going into Boston is a cable-stayed bridge held in part by tension. The trusses in the ceiling above our heads here this morning hold the ceiling up and keep it from falling down around us because of tension. Any one of us who has ever been in a tug of war with another person knows about tension, pulling, pulling, being pulled back, back and forth. We know about tension. In relationships, tension can be a positive expression of growth 
of create creativity, of change. And with a gathering of followers of Jesus like the orchard, tension reflects the reality of a body of people who are diverse but come together around our mutual connection to Jesus. Our journey through Romans, a roadmap for community, has recently repeatedly emphasized the nature of the church meeting in the ancient city of Rome. House churches of people where the cultural barriers of ethnicity, Jew and Gentile together, of gender, male and female, of power dynamics, blessings, bless you, of power dynamics, some slaves, some slave owners, some rich, some poor, and these barriers have become, have been overcome by the mutual presence of the Holy Spirit conforming a community to the image of Jesus. As we dig deeper into Romans chapter 14, understand this, that we can have the tug without the war. We can have the tension without the division because we are a community called to live together in tension. We are to welcome one another. That's what Paul says. Welcome anyone who is weak in faith, but don't argue about disputed matters. Welcome anyone who is weak in faith. And right away you say, hey, wait, wait a second, Paul. We're, we're coming together, and now you use a pejorative term, weak, to describe some of the folks within the body. What's that about? One of the resources that I have been using in our study through Romans is entitled, Reading Romans Backwards by Scott McKnight. About the weak and the strong, McKnight writes, the weak are predominantly Jewish believers who are in the stream of God's election, who know the Bible, who practice the Bible, and still probably attend synagogue, but who sit in judgment on Gentiles, especially the strong in the Christian community in Rome, even though the weak have no status or power. The strong are predominantly Gentiles who believe in Jesus as Messiah or King, but who do not observe the Bible as the will of God for them, or the Torah, and who have coarse, condescending, and despising attitudes probably towards Jews, but especially towards Jewish believers in Jesus. And all of this is wrapped up in the superior, higher status of the strong in Rome. So this mix of people together across ethnic barriers, across gender barriers, across believing barriers have come together around the person of Jesus. And Paul acknowledges that tension. He, he doesn't dismiss it. He acknowledges that tension within the community as he speaks about those he describes as the weak. But in other writings of Paul, he goes a step further, and he identifies himself with the same word. Paul says, to the weak, I become as the weak. In other words, Paul finds a point of common ground with the weak. He's been there. He's done that. He's got the T-shirt. He understands the weak. He says, I understand that. Still, his message is, welcome anyone. In a deeply divided community, Paul is teaching us when we look at another person and question their ethnicity, their affiliations, their means, their beliefs, the issue isn't them. The issue is with us, especially when our questioning comes from a place of privilege and power, the resume of the strong. Specific to the tension within the church at Rome, it has to do with what people are eating. And you go, come on, what, what's the big deal? You eat what you want, I'll eat what I want. But in the ancient world, food, so central to our life this day, but in the ancient world, 
Food sold in the marketplaces most likely had already been offered in a temple. Brought before a god, not of the god of the Bible, but before a pagan god. And so these animal sacrifices would be placed there before the temple. Then brought into the marketplace and sold. And so the people of God wrestled with that. Should I eat meat that has been sacrificed to an idol? And for the Jewish followers of Jesus, their adherence to kosher laws meant that the most widely used and eaten source of protein in Rome, pigs, that was not on the menu. So when they gather together, they're wrestling with this question. (laughs) Do I smell a little beef on your breath? Do I, do I smell a little, little bacon on you? What you been eating? And they would find reasons to divide. And a good reason, because of the use of those foods in pagan worship. But Paul describes that tension, and he says, here is the challenge of diversity. Chapter 14, verse 2. One person believes he may eat anything, while one who is weak eats only vegetables. One who eats must not look down on the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat must not judge the one who does, because God has accepted him. He has accepted them both. The body of believers in Rome was diverse. That's a reality then and now. And the challenge today to even speak about diversity is that the word has become overlaid with political and cultural overtones. But in the body of Jesus, we come from different backgrounds and beliefs. We acknowledge the tug. We acknowledge the tug. But how do we live together without the war? We take an honest look at the ways we judge others. Paul writes in verse 4, Who are you to judge another's household servant? Before his own Lord he stands or falls. And he will stand because the Lord is able to make him stand. One person judges one day to be more important than another day. Someone else judges every day to be the same. In a podcast I was listening to this week, one of the participants said the following, the further I am away from the reality of how others are living, the simpler my solutions will be about how they should change their lives. In other words, The further away I am from people I see on social media, on my screens, in my neighborhood, in my school, the more easily I can judge them and have a simple answer about what they need to do to be changing their lives. And at the end of the day, that changed life looks a whole lot like mine. So do we just acquiesce to the diversity and bury our heads in our ideological sand. Do we just look away, but inwardly we pass judgment? No. Our personal convictions have a wholly different perspective as followers of Jesus. Here, here once again, Paul's words to a community, living together in tension. Let each one be fully convinced in his own mind. Whoever observes the day Observe it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eat for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. And whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat it. And he gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for himself, and no one dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Look at the screen. What holds us together in common, no matter how diverse or different we are? Five times, Paul uses the word 
Lord. Rather than looking at and judging others, we look to Jesus and what Jesus is teaching me about life. Each one of us, with our deeply held convictions, we measure them now by the person and the work of Jesus, our Lord. Because each one of us is being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, our Lord. That, that process of being conformed to the image of Jesus is called Christiformity. To be conformed to the image of Christ, Christiformity. Again, once again, from reading Romans backwards, Scott McKnight writes, Romans is more relevant for the churches of the United States than any book in the Bible. The message is a lived theology of Christiformity manifested in peace among siblings, all siblings, not just siblings like me. The message shouts to the American church that its classism, its racism, its sexism, and its materialism are like the strong social status claims and the weak's boundary behaviors. They divide and conquer. The message of Romans is that the weak and the strong of our day and I say now what I have not said, that everyone thinks they are the strong and that the other is the weak, must surrender their claims to privilege and hand them over to Christiformity. Our passage today ends with a challenge that I believe really helps us live well in tension, in the tug, without the war. So much of the division and strife is because we believe that others are accountable to us. I, I look at someone and I say, look at the way they're living their life. And, and, I, and I think for a moment, you know, that person's accountable to me for the way that they're living their life. Really? That they're accountable to me? Now, now within the body of believers... Those living in Rome and here among us today, we, we are accountable to Jesus. Yes, there certainly is a place within a body of believers for another person to come along and say, would you hold me accountable in this? Would you help me walk this way? But that was by invitation. Somebody asked for it. It's so different when we think the people around me are accountable to me. They're not. They're accountable to Jesus, who is Lord and judge. Paul writes, therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and returned to life for this, that he might be Lord over both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow, and every tongue will give praise to God. So each of us, then, will give an account of himself or herself to God. How quickly I find fault with others. How, how quickly... I can look at another and believe myself to be strong and disdain their weakness. However, if I have my mind and my posture fixed on Jesus, the Lord over both the dead and the living, I see his mercy for me and recognize that I am deserving of his judgment, but I am blessed with his grace. No longer can I see a brother or sister in Christ and wonder, how in the world could Jesus love them? When the real question is, how in the world could Jesus love me? We live together in tension. We must be a diverse body of believers. My focus is on getting to know people and their circumstances before I offer simple solutions to what I believe and perceive to be their problems. I'm told to be fully convinced of my own personal convictions, yes, 
to feel the tug of our own convictions and strongly held beliefs. Yes, feel that. But we are a people focused on Jesus. This is how we live together well, in tension, with the tug, but not the war. Pray with me, please. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can see in you a living example of one who talked with all different sorts of people, some who were with you and for you, and others who were diametrically opposed to you. And you live together well with them all. So Jesus, teach us to do that. Teach us to live together well in tension, to have the tug without the war. And Jesus, we pray these things in your name. Amen.